Good evening, Lake Corey, and welcome to, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Well, I'm your host, and we are, we're, we're back. back. Yes, indeed. This is Between Tiraminas here on ONTV. I am your host, Anthony Tiramina, and I am with my co-hosts, my brother Sammy and my partner in crime, Ian. How are you doing, man? Very well, very sir. Very well. Very well. It's been I mean, a while. It's been a long while. I mean, it's been a while. I mean, you. I mean, you had a baby. You had a baby. You're a proud papa. You've been. Bu you've been busy. You know, I've been busy with writing and. You know, writing and basically staying, you know. You guys have been running this town. Come on. Well, no. I gotta, Don't I've, be been my, I've been doing my podcast. You've you know been doing I mean? your podcast. I've been doing my podcast. I've been writing. I've had a lot of news this week, obviously. Uh, I've been busy news. with Lake Orion sports and everything like that. I mean, just. And I've also had a blog, too. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's We've been so busy, on. you know. Mm hmm. So, what do you want to talk about today? With well, I just want to say it's nice to be back. Oh, definitely. It is. And hopefully we can. Get back you know, to it more often. You know that you know that there's been a lot of pundits that were saying that they had thought about, hey, that our show was dead, that it wasn't, you know, that that we weren't talking, you and that we weren't talking with each other, that you know that hmm. we weren't, you know, it's just it felt like, you know, those are just pundits. Those just pundits. They're, They're pundits. just it's people noise. that are, are spreading you know I mean? rumor and spreading innuendo and all that hearsay. Stuff. Yeah, definitely a lot of hearsay. Yes. Well, pundits, take a look. Take a look. We're take back. Look. We're back. See, look at the picture. We're back. We're back. Crazy. All right. What should we hit on? Let's hit on. Let's hit on the lions. I mean, there's Ooh. supposed to be hope for the lions. There is hope. There's them. supposed to be hope for the lions. Doesn't it feel like true hope? It feels like it. You know, I'm watching. Call me. I'm sucker, watching but. Star Wars: A New Hope, and that's what the lions are. A new hope. <laughs> Because you have a quarterback in Jared Goff, you have plenty of draft capital. You just, I'm the last St. Brown's a star. Uh, they've got, I mean, like, you they're know, they're a young team. They're a young team. They've got a coach. They got a coach who, they got a coach who's a winner now. They've got a guy that can draft. It, yes. Bottom line is here when you look at the Lions, I mean, you look at them. I mean, they it was rough last year for them, and then. Went eight out of ten, you know. How they don't get, get the playoffs? I mean, like that. One and six to one start. One and six yeah, to know. start. That's That'll really what it. it was. But they were one of the NFC's, one of the NFL's best teams. Well, I mean, with Jared Goff, I mean, simply all he had to do was just run the game. He didn't have to be special. All he just had to do was run. Well, the that's game. what he had. He had one of his best seasons he ever had. And all he had to do was just keep it simple. And he did a very good job of that. Accurate, good decisions. Mm -hmm. That's and all he needs. Early in the year when he was throwing his picks, that was you know a big part of the problem when the defense couldn't stop anybody either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they really all did come together in the last 10 games. Well, and I think that's really what it is. If Jared Goff is a perfect game manager, doesn't have to do anything much, You know, doesn't yeah. have to force the issue, doesn't have to really you know just control everything. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You know what? This is a very good football team. This division's right for the taking for the And that, one other note is, both coordinators are back, mm -hmm. which is old news, but pretty big news. Big news. But So to me, if they don't win the division, that is a failure. There's, I mean? definitely, there's definitely, I mean, given Aaron Rodgers is not longer going to be a Packer. The Bears are a daycare center, and the Vikings are the Vikings, even... Well, you know, so they well, did the Bears win the division. have a ton of draft capital and a ton of money to spend. They're the, they do. They're the least payroll team in the NFL. The Bears could take a big step forward. They could. The Vikings could take a big step back. Yeah, the I Packers, think we have no idea what they're going to do. Green Bay's a mess, and you know that. I think they are, but they're also a proud franchise. That is true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but to me, enough's enough. It's right there. The Lions are the most stable team in this mm -hmm. division. 
and they need to prove it by winning the division and hosting a playoff game. Which I think they got a shot. They do. They what, they position themselves well so far in the offseason. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up into the draft, they mm -hmm. have two first round picks, two second round picks. Um, they got to come away with some more starters. I could see them going, you know, first round. If they don't draft, if I could see them possibly training up, maybe going to three. I could see I mean, them Arizona aggressive. looks. Could um, they? Arizona, they could. They could. I, I mean, think they could. I think they could too. I mean, I Arizona could. You be both a team. are agreeing on something. It's early in the show. Yeah, it's too. early. It's, it's early in the show. Too. <laughs> well, we're gonna like, get to Tigers soon, so. But just, Arizona. Yeah, true. But Arizona. I, I mean, I can see the Lions going to three, maybe taking a Will Anderson. If imagine if you have Will Anderson on one side and Aiden Hutchinson on the other side. Oh man, I that's mean, a dream scenario. And then obviously at eighteen, I would. I would. You and I disagree on this. I, I, you want to go more offense. I want to go defense. So I want to stay defense, maybe draft another corner. Yeah. I mean, because the Lions are still very thin in that defensive secondary. I mean, that's really, really the area they got to address. They certainly do. They signed some free agents that are probably going to start. But beyond yeah. this year, and mm -hmm. injuries happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they need they, more they corners. They need to address that. Yeah, they sure. need more corners. Well, that's what I see. And do you have a guy in the first round you'd like to see – the Lions come away with, whether it's trading up or sitting at six, is there a, a player you like or a position? No, not really. I'll just let you, I'll leave you two at that. Okay. I think that it's, you know, I, I think, how many games do you think the Lions are going to win? I say 12 is my minimum. I need 12. I've got them winning. I, I got the, and I talked Lake Orion athletic director and football coach Chris Bell about this. And I, don't be surprised if they win 15 games this year. 15? 15. Don't be surprised. I mean, like, the reason why I say 15, <laughs> you look at the schedule, looks very manageable. I mean, Do, we don't have the schedule. We just know the opponents. The opponents, Things you know, change. We can't I know base things change, the schedule on last year's results. I know things results. change, but 15 games. Is I insane. Think <laughs> manageable. <laughs> it looks manageable. Look at the opponents they got to play. They got to play everybody in the NFC North. I think they can – I think they can – Sweet the NFC North this year. You're asking the Detroit <laughs> football Lions to go one full season and lose only two <laughs> games? Yep. Yeah, he Only is. two games. Yes, he is. And, and Chris, yeah, Bell, he is. Chris Bell calls me crazy. But uh, I think I can see That might be crazy. That, that might, might be, be a crazy. little crazy. How about this? I'd can love to see it. but How about this? I'd, I'd rather be on the safe side. I'm going to say nine and seven. Get out. <laughs> Get out. There's the door. Get out. There's use that door. one. If you want to Get walk out. in front of the camera, use Get that out. door. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Why? Nine and seven. Nine and seven. <laughs> that doesn't win the division. That doesn't win the division. That doesn't get you in the playoffs. <laughs> the playoffs. What am I doing here? What are we doing? Floating? <laughs> what are we doing? I know the Lions win the division, but I think At that nine they're and not. Nine and seven. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, man. Oh, man. Why? Oh, you too. Well, it shuts both of you up. You guys are in disbelief. Yeah. 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 If they they got to they've got to improve on last year. <laughs> yeah, they improved on last year. Nine and seven doesn't get you anywhere. And they. Oh, God. <laughs> We're nine and eight to finish the year. They have eighteen games. My bad. They have 17, 17. games. 17 games? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I feel bad. Okay, so then why don't I just change it then? I'll just, you know, because if we're going to go, if we're going to go. At least 10 games, games will be fine for you. How about let's go 11? Fine. I 11. could live with 11. Let's live go with 11. 11, okay? 11 and 6. There. Are you both happy? I still think 15. I'm not happy, but I'm. Are you I'm, happy? I'll let you stay Ian's for one more 12. segment. You got 12. I got 15. And Ant's got a love. I said 12 was my minimum. 12 is your minimum? 12 was my baseline. Your baseline? Last year, 8 was my baseline. Oh, for the love of God. My baseline. Okay. Any final thoughts on the Lions? I am extremely excited. So you both are saying 9 wins is a failure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back with Between Terminas on a one You TV. will be lucky to be back. <laughs> yeah. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. 
classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Between Terminos here on ONTV. Apparently, I'm back, so that's not that's not a bad thing. I'm your host, Anthony Termina, and I'm with uh, Catman and Sam. How are we doing? We're okay. We're okay. Okay, so let's talk about another kitty cat team, the Tigers. Um, so basically, what's been going on with the Tigers is they've got a, they've had a couple of walk off home runs recently. But and then I've got Sam thinking that they're a daycare center. Yep. So explain both your sides. Uh, let's see. Let's Al, get the worst argument out of Al first. Avila was the worst GM in sports history. Okay, that. He was horrible. Might be true. That may he be true. He was horrible. He was not Ken, good. Yes. Here's the other thing. Casey Mize hasn't been, you know what I mean? I haven't seen Casey Mize, you know what I mean? I've seen him. Yeah? Yeah, he's not pitching, but he's on the bench. Okay. He's hurt. I know he's hurt. But this team, that's probably why I'm saying is an actual daycare center. Because here's a, here's a team who looked absolutely terrible when they lost to Houston. And when they lost to... They beat Houston they beat, two they out of three. They against Houston. But, no, actually, when they played they Tampa, Tampa. Tampa, they looked absolutely terrible against Boston, Tampa. Boston, they looked Boston, bad. Boston, they looked terrible. Toronto, Toronto they didn't look good. They didn't Boston look part of your empire. Boston is part of the Sammy empire. Since um, when? Oh, you have no idea. Bob so, Bridges is trying to dismantle that empire. It's a terrible empire. Bob Bridges needs psychological help. What? I mean, so here... But the Tigers are an actual daycare center. They need uh, help. They're like a bunch they of help. they're like a bunch of young young cubs. Their farm system's a disaster, and we got to figure out this team. They're in some trouble in the um, AL Central this year. You look at that division. You look at Minnesota. You got Cleveland. Chicago's improved. You know Detroit. I could see maybe maybe better than the Kansas City Royals, but but like I said, the Kansas City Royals not very good, but. Maybe even I see the Tigers finishing last in that division. I mean, bottom line is, that team is a daycare center. You know it. He knows it. Bob Bridges knows it. And Eric Jennings especially knows it. Sam, <laughs> do me a favor. <laughs> what? Really. When you get home tonight, turn on baseball tonight. Some sort of baseball show. I do fantasy the baseball. The White Sox. I've been, cr I've been crazy. Listen, the Tigers have won five in a row. They okay. have, yes. Albeit in walk-off fashion. They swept a doubleheader from Cleveland today. All right. Are they a playoff team? Probably not. They will not be. Can they improve on where they were last year? My God, they better. So you're definitely not seeing the Tigers being a situation where it was like in 2000 when they over 100 losses. No, they can't. I do. There's no way. I do. I see it. Because their pitching staff is too young. Their bullpen is a disaster in the making. They can't hit at times. <sighs> they don't look good. They don't they, look they good always. They are not a good That's hitting for team. for sure. They they're are a team not. that usually, air, they're almost above the Mendoza line. That tells you something about that team. I mean, if you're at the Mendoza line, that tells me something that that team can't hit. And then when they give up, they'll, they'll have games where they give up at least seven, eight or runs a night. I mean, I'm telling you right now, when you look at the Tigers, you know, they don't have anybody on that team besides Torkelson and Riley Green who wow me. Other than that, they're, they're a daycare center. Miguel Cabrera doesn't wow you? It's his last year. He's a little long in the tooth these days. But the Tigers are a daycare center! They are young, but we just talked about another young team, the Lions. The Lions have Why hope. Why are they not a daycare center? The Lions center? have hope. The Lions have hope. They were a daycare center when they were one and six. <laughs> now they're not anymore. 
Okay. Well, why don't the Tigers improve? Can't the Tigers surprise? Winning five in a row is surprising to me. Yeah, but who against what competition? The Cleveland? Blue Jays, the Giants, and Cleveland. Cleveland's good. Cleveland is always good. They're Toronto good. solid. Oh, solid. Since they benched Javi Baez, they haven't lost a game. Look, he played a couple. To me, last year, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Everything went wrong last year. They were pathetic. This year, they made some trades. They have some platoon pieces. They got a little more depth in their lineup. Jonathan Scope is. They have a good staff of coaches and managers. In my mind, Jonathan Scope. I think you get rid of him. He is not. Far from being released. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a couple intriguing guys in the minors. They really do. Ian, you Justin seem to Henry have Malloy. Hope. Ian, you seem to have hope I sit up here every year down. trying to talk you this see guy. Into every year, but I they know. Have no hope. They don't have a lot they of hope. They don't have any hope. I think they have hope to they go do not. to be around 500. They're not going to be above 500. They're I think they be, have hope to be around. They're not going to be around 500. They're going to be at least. At least 25, 50 games under 500. You know it. I know it. Bob Brady knows it. Chris Bell knows it. And Eric Jennings knows it. Yeesh. Relax, Sammy. Take a deep breath. Relax. <sighs> Any final thoughts on the Tigers? They're a day two center, and you know it. Who wins this division? Easy. Minnesota. Cleveland gets in. Awesome. Sorry, right. Chicago. We'll be right back with Between Tier Meals here. On I hate team. you. <laughs> Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Between Tiramina here on ONTV. I am your host, Anthony Tiramina. A very emotional, intense segment with the Tigers. Okay, who cares what both of them think? Okay, so let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about a team that they both tend to like, Detroit Pistons. No, do we have to? No, no. let's talk about the Detroit Pistons. Now, both of them, how happy they are about the season. Let's recap it. Yeah, they were really good. They won 16 (laughs) ball games. Out of 82. Oh, my goodness. They're getting a new coach. The tail look was nice. I didn't mind them bringing back the teal. Look. I didn't mind. Well, that's either. because I didn't they, like it at the time. I though. didn't like the green. I didn't like their green. You know, Saint I mean, Cecilia jersey. The Cecilia jersey. I didn't like that. Did you guys like the teal when we were kids and they wore the teal? Did you, you know, like that? You know, looking back at that, it, you know, looking back yeah. at it, you you tend to appreciate it a little bit. But I mean, we were young back then. We I mean, were young. there's a lot of there's a lot who didn't like the teal. You know. I know, but so, it, uh, something about it now. I think I like it better we now. were younger because we were younger and we and we grew up with that. Pretty yeah, much. you know, yeah, what I'm maybe saying? it's nostalgic. Well, Probably. they did put some of the teal part issued uniforms. You know what I mean? The um the horse part of the logo. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean mm-hmm. on the shorts. Remember that 0304 Pistons team that won the yep. NBA title? They wore those piston um the horse the horse the red the red ball the red, with the, the red black ball with the black yeah. yeah you know that was awesome there. Um, but with this team, I mean, they have to get the number one pick. They got to get the number or, one pick, or it's gonna be another young. It's gonna be more of the same. More of the same, and and even with the number one pick, this guy's coming from France. I don't even know how old he is, 12, 13. I mean, he, he's gonna need seasoning. But at least Cade will be back, and we'll be able to see more glimpses of mm-hmm. hope in the future. But the to question me. is, you know, I need a new coach. Here's too. what it They're is: they're getting a new coach, which if when they have the number one pick. We'll help get a better coach. Okay, here's here's the issue I have. How many rebuilds does the city of Detroit have to go through for for Detroit fans who are suffering? You know, you look at this sports town, they're suffering! And sports is all we have in this town. Yeah, that's yes. true. We can't go to the ocean. We can't go ski in the mountains. We have the Great Lakes. 
Well, I three still, months out of the year, unless you're a crazy ice fisherman. I still feel I still feel bad the day that the Pistons left the Palace and went down downtown Detroit. That was a that was a disaster. No offense to the no offense to the great people of Detroit. It's just that it's you know to be fair, I'd rather would have loved to have had a team. I they had a nice wanted. home here. Yeah, had a nice home in, in Northern Oklahoma Oakland County. They yes. did. They did. They really. really and they did. won a lot mm -hmm. over the years. So it was it was sad for sure. Right. Um, but that franchise, boy. I mean, they, they, they moved to LCA. They got Blake Griffin, who was <laughs> nothing. Yep. They need something. They need Cade to stay healthy and to work well with Jaden, and they need the number one pick again. They've got to get Victor Wembanyama. If they can get him, if they can get him at the start, but they've got to develop the bench. They got to have a coach in there that can really help this franchise. You know, I could see Boston. The old Boston coach. Do you want them to take that guy? I do. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's just still so Kyrie much Kyrie. change with the NBA in the, since the days that we were, you know, I mean, it just it feels more offensive oriented. It feels more like, you know, players are not playing as hard. Uh, it's just, and I mean, fans see it, you know, I mean, it's just when they, when they do, when they see their product not playing as hard and, you know, a lot of rest days, off, a lot, yeah, and they, they turn it off. It is a sport to me right now. This era is a lot of it's it's tipping the scales of more sizzle and less steak. Right. right. Um, it's a lot of flash. Um, and that's not what Detroit has always been. That's not how any team how in this any town is going to be successful, be successful, regardless mm -hmm. of sport. Yep. Right. Because even when the Wings were successful and they were finesse, they still had the defense and the heavy hitters to go with it. Speaking of the wings, we can bring up the wings a little bit. My feeling with the wings was they had a, they have a good young core. Yeah. But I felt like that they tanked in the middle of the season. They were right in line for a wild card spot. They were right there, but then they chose to tank closer towards the end of the season. I don't think it was a choosing. No. I think they tanked after they traded and when they could not continue to hang in the playoff race. Well, I mean, they had their chances. They really did. They did. They did. I mean. But they're still not a good team. They, they really had their chances. And I think that, you know, I, would I love to have seen the Wings in a wild card? Yes. But bottom line is that, is this. It's, I felt like that they, <laughs> they tanked after they traded Bertuzzi, and it just went downhill from there. I mean, and, you know, in my mind, Dylan Larkin deserves better. Does that mean trading him? I mean, yeah, he just signed a, an extension. But I mean, like, you know, it. I just feel like that Larkin deserves better. I feel like, it, you know, the Wings deserve better. Is that Eisenman's fault? Who knows? I think both teams that play at LCA have a big offseason. And they both, both have to they, make big moves. They have to make big moves. I mean, bottom line is um, when you look at – I think the Red Wings are in more of a better position than the Pistons. Are. That I agree. I would agree. I agree. They have a lot more draft because capital. They have a lot more draft capital. They have a lot more. Um, both are going to have money to be able to spend. Right. Both are going to have money to spend. But, but what, is anyone going to take the Pistons' money? That prob probably, probably not. I don't not know. Not via free agency. It would have to be a trade. It would have to be a trade. I mean, like, I could see. I'd rather be on the Wings than be on the Pistons. Well. If I, if the, not I think mean. when you look at free agency Detroit, you know what I mean? Like, the Red Wings have a better future I see than the Pistons and I'm not being mean right now it looks like it because you don't they have an identity they know where they're going true Pistons I don't know I mean that's right. the big question you look at I, they're young guys Cade and uh Ivy but throw the and Durin, but it's Cade but it's Cade the wings that. but it's Cade the answer we're gonna find out but throw so the wings the wings are young too they are I yeah. mean it's just you feel but like they have the, a better the, history to rely on their coach. But their you also have, on. but also too, you look at okay, the majority of their players, like, yeah, like the Stones are young too, but the Wings, I feel like they're a little more, they're a little more advanced right now than the Pistons. Yeah, yep. I, can and, that. I mean, Cade is what twenty one. Is Ivy twenty one? I don't know. Duran, it, it's like nineteen. Very young. They're young. It's just, I, they I like those guys though. I think they are kind of grinders. They're hard workers. They're tough guys, which, again, it's what they're going to need to succeed in Detroit. They need to get somebody else mm -hmm. via top of the draft. Draft, I could see, being very important here. Speaking of the NHL playoffs, changing topics a little bit, Sammy, um, obviously, Stars are in the playoffs. The Avalanche are in the playoffs. 
Um, definitely, obviously, you've got the Minnesota Wild. I've got Seattle Kraken. Um, your stars, we've got the Wild. My Avalanche, we've got the Kraken. So, definitely. Go no, we're not saying I that. I cannot stand the Minnesota Wild. Why? There's so much hatred I have for the Minnesota Wild. I don't like the Wild either. It's Wait, not funny. May I say the something? The history. Wait. Norm Green. Are you going to watch his program, History Now? I will be watching very closely. But okay. I can't stand the Minnesota Wild. Norm Green, what he did was the right move to get that team out of Dallas. Or out of Minnesota. Out of Minnesota and into Dallas. Yeah, because Dallas is a really good hockey town. Dallas is a great hockey town. It's on the border of the desert. Get they out of here. They won a Stanley Cup. Who cares? So you look years at ago. so you look I won at, a Stanley Cup last year. So Shut you up. look at <laughs> you look at Minnesota. Most Minnesota of the people watching me, didn't see Dallas win the cup because they weren't alive in the last century. You need but to I won a Stanley you Cup need last year. Your history. I know my history. You need to learn your they history. They won in 99. Yes, they did. That is true. Ian's right. They won in 99. But 24 <laughs> years the ago. The Stars have faith. I have faith in the Dallas Stars. You are. You, They're you, going to win a Stanley Cup this year. Why? You still in a crib oh, when they won the Stanley you're, Cup. You're in denial. You're in denial. I think. Stars well, have no hope. <laughs> Yeah, you that. Are you anyway, telling no. the bridges, Bob? Oh. The bad ones in the bridges? Never. Anyways, I think, anyways, the Avalanche has just as good a chance to win the Stanley Cup. I think right now the teams to beat right now are the Boston Bruins and the Edmonton Oilers right now. Do you the Bruins think aren't, are going to choke in this one? You think they will? They will choke. I think the, if, if, if it's Tampa, I think Tampa just has got too, too much experience. Um... Edmonton's looking like they're going to be the biggest threat to the Avs. I can't believe Ken Holland. I know. Again. It looks like the Oilers are going to be the biggest threat. But if 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 between the Avs and the Oilers, I pick the Avs every time. But then again, I pick the Avs against every team. Well, I would say the Avs have a better shot when it comes to those two because of the experience of last year. And you can't deny that. You can't deny it. Yeah, Edmonton's better, but you can't deny experience. Playoff hockey is a different animal. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think the I Stars and Wild are going to be very interesting. Who's and that? I think the Stars and Wild are going to be very interesting. They match each other up so well. It's uh, That's gonna one go right seven now. Games. That's going to go seven games. You I think, lost. and I can't wait to see. Right and I can't yeah, wait to see right the Avalanche now. take whoever comes out of the Stars and Wild. Sam, I haven't forgotten 2020. I'll never forgive you for 2020. That was a horrible experience, and I'll make sure that never happens again. I think this will be a better matchup because. The fans will be in the stands. It will be an exciting time in the Terramina household. If we Better can, than if we can get there. If, it, if we can get there. I mean, he's still got to get by Minnesota. I got to get by Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Come on. Still, NBA playoffs, obviously, you're looking at that right now. I still think it's going to be, um, you know, I got a couple good, um, I got a couple couple students at Oakview. Um, one's a big-time Milwaukee Bucks fan. Um, so... And Milwaukee and Boston, I think it's going to be a great series here. I mean, in the East, I think those are the two teams that make it out. Um, and then on the other, on the Western side, the watch the Denver Nuggets. Does Sacramento have any shot? Yes. Do they? Yeah, I think you can knock off Golden State. You think it's they interesting can? I think, because I think it's Denver and Sacramento. Hmm. I think those two teams will be very interesting in the West. Um, I could see a matchup between. Denver Nuggets and the Boston Celtics, I can see it happening. Or maybe yeah. in the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, like, I, 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 the Bucks with Giannis. Um, Giannis. Yeah, with Giannis. I just think that I think the Bucks got a great chance to, even though they're down 0-1 right now, but I still think Milwaukee wins that series and it goes to seven games. So, you guys got any final thoughts? We'll um, revisit all these we'll predictions, all these hopefully predictions, on a yeah. future episode, eh? Yes. Yeah. Well, Get back uh, in here. All right. So, thank you, guys. Thanks for having Thanks me. For having us. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. That'll do it for our return of Between Terminas here on ONTV. You guys take care. Have a great night, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Sammy, get out of here. And get out of here. Yeah.